I'm going to talk today about uh, this idea of a, of a data lake. In fact, the title of the presentation is, What is a Data Lake Anyway? So I think uh, even those of us who are really passionate about the power, the transformative power of big data in organizations and the potential still to come have to accept that this field has more than its fair share of hype and more than its fair share of exaggeration at the moment. And one of the unfortunate consequences, side effects, if you will, of that hype is that a number of the labels that we use to describe some of the things going on in the industry become very overloaded very, very quickly. And they become overloaded to the point of almost complete abstraction, where people use the labels and we're really not sure what they mean by them. And I'm a little bit concerned that this data lake label is fast becoming one of those really overloaded terms that doesn't really mean anything anymore. So I think now's a good time to examine what should we mean by a data lake? If we're going to start building these data lakes, what would we like them to be? How should they be the same from the things that we've been doing previously? And more importantly, perhaps, how should they be different? So definitions and discussions about data lakes in the industry, they're, they're many, they're varied, and they're frequently contradictory. Uh, they're almost all synonymous with Hadoop, but that's about all some of them have in common. To read some of the analysts and commentators, you could be forgiven for thinking that uh, the data lake is almost the prototypical use of Hadoop. But actually, referenceable data lakes are much, much smaller in number than there are referenceable Hadoop deployments. And if you Google, um, or if you, if you go onto Amazon.co.uk at least, I can't speak for Amazon in South Africa, but if you go onto Amazon.co.uk and search for data lake, the number one hit is actually a book about using uh, lake bed data, sediment data, to try and understand and track environmental changes, which is probably not what you had in mind. Um, there is not yet a body of best practice around this concept of a data lake. Later on, we're all going to have the privilege of seeing Barry Devlin speak. Barry, of course, wrote one of the books that not just defined the emerging data warehouse, several decades ago, but told you how to build one. And by and large, this field around the data lake isn't mature for there to be any kind of work like that. One of the things that pretty much all the definitions around the data lake have in common is this idea of a raw, unmodeled pool of data. And this will dis we'll return to this discussion a couple of times during this presentation. But there are really two ideas. One, uh, one idea is that we'd like to do less ETL processing. ETL processing can be difficult, time consuming, and expensive. What if we could do less of it? And the second big idea is what if we could apply multiple different schemas to the same data at runtime? Would that be interesting? Would that enable us to do some new things that we don't find it so easy to do today with enterprise analytic systems? Those are really the two common themes running through all of these discussions. One of the other common themes running through these discussions is the idea that this data lake will help us break down organizational silos will help us make data more accessible throughout our organizations and also help data become more integrated throughout our organizations. And those are, are worthy and worthwhile ambitions given how siloed some of our enterprises are, how difficult it is to meaningfully compare data across different functional areas, across different departments and lines of businesses. But some of you could be forgiven for having a sense of deja vu at that point. Because accessibility and integration were what many of you thought you were building a data warehouse for. Many of you in this room have been wildly successful with data warehousing initiatives, and you could be forgiven for asking yourself whether you actually need a data lake. And some of you in this room have been less successful with sharing information and analytics across the organization. And I think you could be forgiven for wondering if we're not guilty of just putting a new label on an old idea and hoping that somehow things will turn out differently will turn out better this time. So one of the first and one of the key questions that I think we have to ask ourselves is, are we building something new here? Is this data like a new architectural construct? Or are we just replatforming data marts, onto the Hadoop, uh, data marts and data warehouses onto the Hadoop technology stack? And if we are just replatforming existing solutions onto the Hadoop technology stack, what are the consequences, in particular, of trying to support multi-user, complicated, integrated data warehouses on today's Hadoop technology stack? 
I see a lot of Hadoop development teams today basically modeling or building applications as single subject area star schemas with all of the dimension tables pre-joined to the fact table at load time. That doesn't feel very new and very revolutionary to me. It feels like what we were doing in the mid to late 1990s. It feels like Inman versus Kimball all over. And those of you that will live through that debate remember that the conclusion we came to was that it wasn't Inman or Kimball, it was Inman and Kimball. I think if you think about the strengths of the Hadoop technology stack and the things that Hadoop enables us to do in our organizations that traditionally we haven't really been able to do very well at all, enterprise search, natural language processing, uh, to, to enable us to understand not just what customers have done, but what they're thinking, graph analytics to help us understand not just what they're thinking, but who they're sharing those thoughts with, machine learning at scale. If you think about all those incredible things that Hadoop enables us to do, I really hope that what we're doing is not just building single subject area star schema data marts on Hadoop. I think that would be an enormous waste of the potential of the technology. And I think far from breaking down the silos in our organization, we'd be likely to be building new ones. And let's return to that thought later in this presentation as well. I think if you take the merits of the different technologies out of the equation for a moment, this is what a lot of us are thinking. That the difficult, time-consuming, and expensive part of a traditional business intelligence and analytics project is integrating the data, mapping the data in our source systems to a new target data model, defining ETL processes that transform the data from the source system representation to the target representation, building data quality processes on top of all of that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's difficult and unglamorous work, and it adds time, cost, and complexity to projects in very many cases before we've understood if the data concerned will have value for our organization and how much value that data might have for our organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think a lot of us are thinking, given that time, effort, cost, and complexity, wouldn't it be nice if we just couldn't bother? Wouldn't it be nice if we could acquire data into our enterprise analytic systems without all of that friction? I think, unfortunately, the problem with enterprise information management is there are no free lunches. I think this idea of schemaless data management, of applying a schema on read rather than a schema on load, is a very, very powerful idea. Many of you in this room will already be working in this way. If you're capturing complex device data today into an enterprise analytical system, probably you're not modeling it relationally, or at least you're not modeling all of that data relationally, because if you are, Every time you download a new firmware update to that device, that device becomes capable of capturing new and different attributes. And now you've got to go through that whole modeling process over again with changes to the target data model, with changes to the ETL and the data integration processes over and over ad infinitum. And that becomes a very, very difficult way of working. So this idea of capturing the raw data and applying different schemas, different information management models to that data on read is a very, very powerful one for clickstream data, for machine log data, data whose structure changes continuously. But that doesn't mean, I think, that we're going to abandon the idea of schema on load, the idea of transforming data to a new and a fixed target data model when we load it in very many cases. Because when we have that kind of increased ceremony, we get a number of positive benefits as well. We get improved accessibility. We get improved data quality. We get improved performance because we're not having to interpret that data at runtime. We can optimize access paths. So we need to stop thinking about data management in terms of one or the other. This isn't an either or conversation. It's a both and conversation. And whether the schema is explicitly designed up front or implicitly inferred afterwards, there is always a schema. So we should not think that schema on load is bad and schema on read is good, or vice versa. I think increasingly what we need to do is embrace the fact that both techniques <coughs> excuse me, have their place and that there isn't a single information management strategy silver bullet, far less a single big data technology silver bullet that's going to solve all of our big data problems. The future of big data are plural. 
You're going to apply multiple information management strategies to different data, depending on the use case and the scenario. And you're going to need multiple information technologies to manage those data and apply those different strategies. And I think it's hugely significant that pretty much all of the major analysts, pretty much all of the commentators now have come to the same conclusion. Gartner call this idea the logical data warehouse. Forrester call this idea the enterprise data hub. Confusingly, that's what Cloudera used to refer to the data lake. At Teradata, we had to be different, and so we called this the unified data architecture. But effectively, these things are all synonyms for each other. And effectively, what we're all saying is, Big data are plural, you'll need multiple technologies, and now integration becomes an absolutely critical consideration. How do we stitch all of these things back together again? How do we present a transparent experience to the end user? How do we simplify the management and administration of this complex network of systems? And how do we synchronize data across all of these different platforms? So this, I think, is how we should define the data lake, as a centralized, consolidated, persistent store of raw, unmodeled, and untransformed data. And some people stop there. There are a number of people that think that traditional governance and metadata management are part of the problem, and that we should delegate responsibility for these things to end users and to application designers and developers. I will tell you that I'm not one of them. I think this idea of a centralized, consolidated, persistent store of raw and unmodeled data, probably we should say lightly modeled data, is very, very interesting and potentially extremely useful. But only if we are prepared to manage this information as a corporate asset. It doesn't necessarily mean managing it in the same way as we manage those other assets, but I think it's a mistake to conclude that we don't need any management in this environment. And I get particularly nervous when some analysts and commentators who, in my view, should know better say, it's OK not to manage this environment, because this is only an environment in which we're going to do data science. And therefore, we don't need metadata management. We don't need data lineage. We don't need governance. I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding of the scientific process. As was mentioned in the introduction, I think, I was briefly a research scientist before I became an IT guy. I can't tell you honestly that I learned very much in trying and failing to get my PhD in solid state physics. But the one thing I did learn about science is that it's absolutely based on repeatable process and reproducible results. And what price reproducible results in our analytic experiments in our organizations, absent any management, absent any metadata management, absent any governance whatsoever. I think this is a fundamental misunderstanding. I don't think these platforms can scale without some level of control. And even more importantly, perhaps, <clears throat> one of the uses of the data lake, increasingly in some organizations, is as a platform to capture data on its way into the organization, is as a platform to feed other downstream systems in the enterprise, like the data warehouse. Well, if that's the way we're going to use the data lake, then any chain being only as strong as the weakest link, it becomes fundamental to understand how the data has been treated, transformed, and processed in that environment. Otherwise, we lose end-to-end -end metadata and lineage, not just in the data lake environment, but potentially across the entire enterprise as a whole. I think one of the other things that we need to think about is, uh, is the second law of thermodynamics, which is a physicist's way of saying, the order is not a natural phenomenon. If we want a degree of order and management and control, it has to be imposed, and it has to be imposed at a net cost in energy. Left to themselves, systems become more chaotic. Disorder increases. Nature very often doesn't, doesn't give us one single beautiful lake, which is the metaphor for this data lake. It gives us a messy patchworks of lakes, plural. And none of the new technologies that we get excited about are by themselves a cure for information entropy, for increased disorder in information management systems. Quite the reverse in some cases. I was talking to a very, very smart Teradata customer a couple of weeks ago. They're doing some incredible things with Hadoop, some of the use cases that we described before. They're integrating their Hadoop cluster with their data warehouse. Really very, very interesting. But they already, three or four years after deploying Hadoop, have 20 sizable Hadoop clusters in production, 20. 
I think we need to ask ourselves, is that a sustainable trajectory? Or are we trading agility today for sclerosis in the medium term? The big systems integrators think you're trading agility today for sclerosis in the medium term in some cases. They're already working up Hadoop cluster consolidation offers in the same way that they offer data mark consolidation offers in the last two decades. Nothing wrong with that. They'll deliver a lot of value. But while you're doing those consolidation projects, you'll be expending time and energy and capital that you can't use to deliver new analytic projects. If you can control that entropy in the first place, you'll be in a much better position later on. Lastly, and to wrap up, I do believe in this concept of a data lake. I think it's more concept than reality in very many cases. But this idea, this reality in, or, or nascent reality in some organizations of a lightly modeled pool of data, of a schema on read, of applying multiple interpretations to the same data, depending on the use case, we've already seen that it can add value. You shouldn't design, build, and manage this infrastructure in the same way that you manage a data warehouse, because you're not going to replace one with the other. Remember, this is a both-and conversation, not an either-or conversation. Because, but because you need to manage these two infrastructures differently doesn't mean you shouldn't manage them at all. The first time that we did application-specific file-based management of data without any consideration for the enterprise, things got so crazy that we had to invent the database industry. And if we don't learn from that history, I suspect we're condemned to repeat it. Thank you very much indeed for your time today. Enjoy the rest of the conference.